Welcome! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom wet stick stand to make your production of uh, floating cotton candy clouds much more productive with the Robo Jet Floss Cotton Candy Machine. Now, this is one of the few videos where I'm going to show you how to be more efficient with a Robo Jet Floss without actually showing you the Robo Jet Floss. But at this point, I have to assume you've watched other videos, done research, and you're well aware of what makes the Robo Jet Floss so much different than anything else on the market is that it shoots the floss upward rather than collecting it in a floss pan. And this allows you to make some really large size floating cotton candy clouds, unlike anything else on the market. Now, in order to do that, you're going to eventually have to work uh, your way from probably your comfort zone if you've been making cotton candy, and the comfort zone is your typical paper cones. And when I say work your way away from it, what I mean is you can still use these, and, and I still do, making smaller servings, especially when there's really young kids. The parents often want smaller cones, and these work out just fine. But in, in order to really differentiate yourself from everything else on the market and, and impress customers and clients and draw crowds, what you end up having to work with is longer skewers, typically bamboo, and most commonly in about the 20 inch length. And I, I do know people that work as short as 15 or 16 inches and, and many that work in 24 inch lengths. Uh, if you look online videos, you'll see people working um, 24 to 36. And uh, I think I've seen videos with people using what I think are broomstick handles, making clouds of five and six feet in diameter. But uh, you can't make those very quickly, and I have no idea what you charge for that. So uh, back to the basics, most people are going to work around a 20-inch length. Um, it, once you get to uh, using bamboo skewers, however, what is different and you have to adjust for is the fact that they're both dry and smooth. And why this requires adjustment is because this doesn't hold cotton candy very well. Um, when you first start out and you put this over a RoboJet floss and start spinning it, you'll collect floss very quickly and easily and you'll think things are working out real well until you get to maybe about a 8, 10 inch cloud size and, and then you'll notice that it's not gripping and your stick will start spinning inside the cloud and, and then you're done. You, you can't make it any larger. So the way you have to overcome that is you have to soak it in water so that the wood gets moist. And that moisture, when it meets the warm floss that's shooting up from the machine, it creates really good adhesion. But, a um, uh, little warning here, if you don't dry the surface of the stick, you're going to end up with the exact same problem, but for a different reason. The problem being that you'll be spinning inside of the floss, but in this case the reason is if the surface is soaking wet, um, you end up making a little layer of juice, and then that doesn't adhere very well. So the tip to being successful when you're using wood skewers is to pre-soak them so they're really moist, but when you withdraw them to give them a quick rag wipe so that they're real moist, real wet, but the surface is actually not dripping. Now having said that, most people, uh, if you look online or just from random experience, they're going to start out using some sort of a cup. Uh, fill it with water, and uh, that will work. There's, there's no reason it won't. But the obvious limitation is that even a tall cup is typically only six or seven inches tall, which means you can only get really good adhesion on the very tip of your stick. That will work. I, I'm not saying that it won't, but it's certainly not as good as coating all of the stick, except for what I call the handle portion, the last four or five inches. Because what I like to do is to get that first layer laid down across the entire length of the stick, uh, and that allows you to build a much better cone, much larger, and you can spin it much faster without worrying about the, the grip uh, letting loose from the floss. So the first problem with a typical cup is the, the limit as to how much you can actually get good adhesion on. The second limit is uh, how many sticks you can pre-soak at any given time. In many instances that may not be an issue at all, but the ability to put 50 or 100 sticks in and have them soaking at any given time is a real plus. Um, the third advantage to having your own custom stick stand is that you don't actually have to have it up here on the table. Uh, the way I've built it, I set it down beside the table that I'm working at, the bench, wherever I happen to be, and uh, it's tall enough and stable enough that I can just reach down without looking, pull a stick out, give it a wipe, and go right to work. So it frees up a lot of space, because remember, ordinarily I'm going to have a machine with a really large bowl here. So the freer my workspace, uh, the easier it is for me to function. The uh, last disadvantage to working with a cup on a table is that no matter how careful you are, eventually you're going to spill water all over, and if it goes the other direction, um, 
water all over customers, clients, could be the machine, could be picking up sticks for a couple minutes, delaying production. Uh, it, it's going to happen, and, it, it, and I've seen it happen. So um, you can, of course, affix your cup in any number of ways, from straps to cutting holes in tables to duct tape. Um, so I'm not saying that's insurmountable, but it's not as efficient as having a custom wet stick stand, which um, built with a base is uh, actually incredibly stable. Uh, I've never managed to knock it over. Uh, I'd actually have to physically fall over myself, and uh, even then it, it might stay, stay upright. So what I'm going to teach you how to do is to very easily and quickly build this for very little money, depending on what you have sitting around the house, um, maybe almost no money at all. Frankly, decorating it costs me more than, uh, than constructing it. So the next part of this video is uh, what do you need in order to do this? Uh, and frankly, it is, it is so simple to do um, that uh, it'll take you longer to watch the video and uh, certainly longer to go Home Depot and buy the parts uh, than it will to actually put it together. So that's what's next is what do you need and uh, how you do it is actually pretty much self-explanatory. So here's the basic pieces you need to create your own custom wet stick stand. First and foremost, a three inch diameter piece of PVC pipe cut to any length that you uh, think is appropriate for the length of skewers that you're going to use. Uh, the key component to make this work is actually a PVC toilet flange. Uh, surprising, but this is what you need to make the project work. And you can get these in two variations, and the one that you want is the type that comes with what's called a knockout plug. And the purpose to that is that you can, uh, when you're actually using it to install a toilet, you can secure it to the floor and you can actually pressure test your system and when you're secure that uh, you've done it properly you can then knock out that plug so that water can flow through it. In our case we're not going to do that. We want that plug in place so that when we install the pipe it becomes a, a sealed tube. Um, and to, to affix it, technically speaking, to work with plumbing PVC, you would use a uh, primer and a PVC cement. Uh, I happen to have these around the house. You can, of course, buy all of this at any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever is available to you. Um, uh, for this purpose, of course, since it's not actually plumbing, you can probably use any decent epoxy or glue that you have available. But um, to make it watertight and to do it according to specs, um, I use the, the actual real plumbing material. Uh, once you glue those together, then it's just a matter of affixing it to the baseboard you're going to use. I, I used a piece of plywood. Obviously any wood or any decent uh, stable material you want will work. Uh, the type of screws that I used were uh, lath screws, and you generally just want something with a, with a really large head. So these types of screws, um, I've seen certain metal roofing screws, cabinet screws, uh, you can use regular screws with just washers, but fewer parts is better, helps maintain the appearance. And you do want the large head because these, uh, these flanges have really large holes and, and I want something to sit on top of that and have a nice finished look rather than uh, recessing down into it. So you're going to use eight of those to affix it to your surface. And uh, once you've done that, um, prime the whole thing up, top and bottom, underside, so that it's moisture proof. And then affix some sort of either a felt feet or rubber feet, whatever you think is appropriate for your uh, environment. But you want feet on the bottom, one, to give it a little bit of stability, and two, I think, importantly, to keep it off the floor so that if there is water in the areas that you work from time to time, that the wood stays dry. Um, and that's really all there is to the project. I would say that uh, the only thing I want to illustrate here is I didn't cut this piece of wood to size. That's just scrap. I originally did use a large platform thinking it needed it for stability, but if, uh, if you notice that in the working model that I actually do use, uh, I only have maybe an inch on uh, every side of the flange and it's plenty stable. So entirely up to you what you affix it to, uh, but this one here is just for demo. You can make it much, much smaller and still have quite a bit of stability. So those are the parts. Assembly is probably five minutes at best. Takes you longer to decorate it than it actually does to build it. And literally any hardware store, home improvement store, you might spend 20 bucks or less and uh, you can uh, build yourself a wet uh, stick stand and then decorate it according to your company colors or your own personal taste. So in closing, essentially all you have to do is glue the couple parts together, screw the base down to the deck, 
Give it a quick primer paint coat so that everything is good and sealed, including the bottom, attach the feet, and then uh, decide how you want to decorate it. In my case, again, I spent more in spray paint than all of the other parts together. I just gave it a white base paint and then uh, spot sprayed it with both pink and red because that matches the colors for my floatingcottoncandy.com website banners, cards, and everything I use for promotion. The cost of the materials itself, though, is certainly less than $20. And again, you, you may have some of the parts around your, uh, your place of business or your home and uh, spend even much less than that. The only real technical decision you have to make is how big do you want to make the base? And again, I only left about an inch around the surround for the mounting flange. I originally started out much larger than that, thinking that it wouldn't be stable otherwise. But uh, frankly, it wasn't necessary. And then two, uh, where do you want to cut the pipe? Now again, I'm using a 20 inch rod for the most part. So I cut it about uh, four or five inches shorter than that because I wanted that handle to be dry. Um, but that's just, just really a matter of taste. So there's no right or wrong answer. So thanks for watching the video. I hope this uh, is useful to you, makes your life a little less stressful, more productive, uh, particularly when you've got a lot of customers in a line. It's really nice to be able to have this right beside you, 50, 100 sticks soaking at any given time. Just remember to give them a, a quick wipe with a rag so they're not actually physically wet before you start production. And uh, I can pretty much guarantee you'll find this uh, a project well worth doing yourself. Thank you, and I'll see you here next time.